computer. Okay, so I haven't gotten much done since uh, last week. Uh, the only thing I did, I ran over to Home Depot and bought some shorter screws and shorter bolts to replace all the ones on my front end that I was showing last time. And I was going to buy the the two five sixteenths bolts that the whole that does the actual steering, but they have a really crappy selection there, so I'll have to go to Menards and get a bag of bolts there that so I can get at least two that are the same kind. And other than that, I'm pretty much happy with the the, the size of the screws and everything. And after that, I'm not sure where I'll go from there. But one other thing I noticed on that, or thing that occurred to me, what started it was, I, I've got that super servo, you know, and it's, it's got the big, uh, over here, it's got the, the connector. So you put in two big wires into that. And I was just going to find some random wire, like maybe about that size wire. I don't even know what that is. But I ended up finding something a little bit smaller than that. And I was when I put the, the wires into these screw terminals, they keep popping out. I, when I put them in here, they keep they keep popping out or just working their way out. See so over here on this one, it's got the, the wires for the motor stuck in there and it's got a strain relief on. So those generally stay in. So anyway, I got those wires. I was going to put those wires in. So I got something called crimp on ferrules. So you take your stranded wire and you crimp this thing on the end. It's just a little round pin that you crimp on there. So I stuck those in there. I thought I should still strain relief that somehow. So I found these little uh, cable clamps and I was going to uh, bolt those to the side of my frame just to strain relief of the wire. It turns out the smallest one I had was 3 16 and the wire, the two wires twisted together were not, they, it wouldn't hold those tight. So I'd either have to cram something in there or go out and buy some eighth inch clamps, which so far I haven't found those. I, I think I've seen them listed somewhere, but I can't, you know, walk in and buy them. And, and anyway, so while I was looking at it, I thought, you know, I'll, also I realized my frame is not grounded on that, you know, that whole front end, the whole, front steering thing where it's got the servo bolted some bolted to a frame bolted to the axle and all this stuff that's just all floating out in space because i've got a, a piece of wood that connects the back to the front so there's no electrical connection from that frame to anything else so while i was at it i, I twisted a, a green wire in with my my yellow and black wire that i'm using so then i thought okay now that'll fit in the clamp so i stuck it in there it's still too loose so i could either put put one or two pieces of heat shrink on it and then put it in there or i could just wrap some electrical tape around and put it in there. So it, that's really not stopping me. It's just something that something else to distract me on that. So that, that's pretty much where I'm at on that by mini tractor project. I, as I put new screws in and I, I'm looking at the wiring just, just basically to distract me from doing anything else. Okay, the next thing on my list here, uh, Terry said he's not gonna be here this time. And, but he said he's got that uh, dual channel Cytron board. And he said when he got it, he took it out of the box, hooked up the motors, hooked it up probably to his drill battery. He had some kind of some kind of power source that he could push the buttons and run the motors backwards and forwards. So then he connected that board to his his itsy bitsy board, which is kind of like a teensy, teensy or something. It's got a uh, arm processor on it. And he said that would not control. He, he couldn't get the motors to move at all by doing that. And then out of desperation, he tried hooking five volts right to the PWM pin and they still wouldn't turn. So he tried a bunch of other things and he sent me an email and I did some digging. I said, well, on this one tutorial, they show the ground of the battery connected to the ground of the logic. And I just assumed that would have been done on the board already. But I said, well, I, I don't know, but you can try that. So later he wrote back, says, yeah, I hooked those together. Now it works. And I said, well, what if you unhook that wire? So he got back to me, says, well, I unhooked the wire and it still works. So, so we're both baffled now what is wrong with that, why it didn't work in the first place and why it does work now and why it doesn't stop working again. So. So that was the uh, that was the update from him that he's got that to the point he's doing that, and he said now that he he said so now he can he can run the motors from the board, and on the board uh, you know it, it does the PWM and direction, and then he said he's also got he's sending it serial commands to control the speed, and I don't know if that just meant he's sending a you know typing a number and hit enter if that's what he's doing or if he has something else going, so he says the next thing he's going to do is look at his quadrature decode. And I know on the boards, the ARM boards I buy are new enough. They've got the quadrature decode peripheral built into them. But just a quick look on his processor, which I think is an, an Atmel SAM21, no, SAM D21, SAM21D. Anyway, it's something about SAM and a 21 and a D. And that one, I don't, I didn't notice that that has that built in. So in a case like that, you can always drop back to Arduino libraries that are going to do quadrature decode. They say pick two pins and it assigns interrupts to those and does some fancy lookup tables in your code. And everybody says, oh, those work great. Well, I've 
I I wouldn't use that if I didn't have to, but if you if that's what you what you got, then I guess I'd say go ahead and try it and run it until it until it doesn't work, and then you can do something else with it at that point. Uh, and if I, I was thinking of Terry while I was out moving my snow, I and the other thing I was thinking of, you know, every, I watch YouTube and every once in a while these videos pop up says, oh here's this giant train with this giant rotating blade on the front blasting through the all the mountain passes, you know, it's moving just huge amounts of snow. You could build a small one like that. Just get a small rotary disc and put on the front of your thing and drive forward. So you don't have to have all the extra augers and the impeller wheels and all that. You just got this giant impeller stuck out front and you just push it into the snow and it, it just starts blowing the snow all over the place. So that, I, I was thinking about that too, while I was up moving snow today. Um, let's see. That's, I guess that's all I got on snow and what Terry was doing and my screws. So I, I've, I've been spending the last few weeks uh, back on the Ross agriculture stuff. So I've been going through it, indexing videos. I, I'd, I'd got to the point since I think 2021 was the last date that I put down, and the last one I had posted, I have 166 out of 250 videos indexed, and that's both the community meetings and uh, the lawn tractor meetings. And I started in on it again, and I see as of last night, I'd finished off all the lawn tractor ones, and those were getting pretty grueling towards the end, but I, I got those finished off. So I think I'm up to now, I have 200 indexed, which means I got 50 more to go, and that's, they're going to be the community meetings. And that ranges all the way from like the second meeting up to, you know, halfway through. They just randomly in, in between there, I have to go do those. Uh, what was their point I was going to make on that? Da, da, da. So I, I last night I, I committed myself and said, okay, I, I, re, I made a copy of the file and put yesterday's date on it and changed the comment at the top saying I've got 200 videos done now. So sometime today I'll, up, I'll upload that to my website again and I'll just put a note on uh, the lawn tractor group saying that I have done this. I'm not sure anybody cares, but I'll put it on there anyway. And then automatically, if you're watching a YouTube video and you click on the link and it takes you there, then it'll just be the newer, have the newer stuff that's indexed out there. And I guess that's all I've got to whine about right now. So I'll turn it over to you. Starting with the last item first. Um, that's awesome because I was moving some files around and came across trying to find them here and I'll share my screen. Um, some videos from some meetings when I was saving them to um, Google Drive. And I was wondering if you had these. Um, let's that, that was the new lawn tractor group is the ones you're talking about? Yeah, here I'll share my screen. Um, I, I think I downloaded those and put those out to YouTube, but uh, I can go back and check. So I'm not exactly sure what you're seeing here, but um, so the dates are like March 21 through August 21. Vinny, anyway, make a, make a screenshot of that. Uh, sure. Make a screenshot and then post it somehow. So, so I know what's out there because that's on your computer, right? Yes, it's on my uh, NAS NAS drive. Because um, I was taking stuff off the actual Google Drive where you were then uploading stuff to there, and so I I I, I can check you know each one to make sure we've got got them all accounted for. Um, because I was trying to save some space on the Google Drive, and so I was moving this stuff onto my NAS drive and. I was just trying to figure out whether you had them or not. Um, I better stop sharing because it seems like it's taken a long time there. So I just put that in your um, into a Slack message. Okay. I'll go back and look over those and check because the ones that are on the Google Drive, I think I took all those and uploaded those to YouTube. So I think they're all in one place now, but I, I'm not sure. I'll check that. Uh, the other thing that I was going to share was I haven't made a lot of progress 
on the tractor um, because I, I got simulation working well, well, you know, reasonably. And, um, and so I was going back looking at my workspace on my tractor, which is, yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Um, so I have like a simulation workspace and a web bots workspace, and then the actual Catkin workspace, which is um, got a lot of stuff in it. And so I was, I don't know whether it's um, a distraction or gonna add value, but I was going back trying to ask myself, so, if I create a workspace, um, that's sort of small, but I was thinking about creating, what are the files, having three folders, one for the lawn tractor simulation, one for actually physically running, and one that's got common files between them. So um, I haven't implemented this yet because I was trying to clean up a laptop to put this on so I don't break my actual tractor, but these were the files that I was thinking would be in each one. So the simulation would have gazebo, whatever I needed from a gazebo standpoint would have a launch file for launching the simulation. Um, and it would have YAML files, you know, specifically for, I don't know what I was thinking there, plus other related YAML files. Um, I think because this is move base, this would be move base and not move base, is it move base flex, the other one? Um, I think there might be a little bit differences there. So a physical one that would have an include for the um, behavior tree that Vinny wrote. It would have the GPS ODOM in the source because that's again, physical, not related to the simulation. It would have this move base state machine Python script and a couple launch files specifically to, you know, the physical GPS. And then in the common, Part, um, I found some stuff about send goals that I want to talk about, uh, but that would be in the common part because I think that would, be, well, I don't know now because it move base versus move base flex, whether that would work or not. But anyway, the maps would be common. If we had a mesh for the DAE file, that would be in there and then put the support files there. So that's the structure I'm thinking about um, to try to clean up my workspace. Um, so that's pretty much the only thing I've spent on from a robot standpoint. The other thing that I spent time on was I had asked you, Jeff, last time whether you had access to um, a website and what I found out is that my internet provider has some DNS entries that was keeping me from um, getting to, well, it's trying to find a file here. Um, there's a file in Ubuntu called resolve.conf and it's got DNS entries in it. And darned if I couldn't, um, I never put those in there, but somehow they got in there from Fios and it was causing me not to be able to get to some things. So I uh, spent some time cleaning up or changing um, my DNS entries. So that was uh, wasn't exactly robot related, but I thought I would just share that. So if you can't get to 
a website like DNS leak test, or you can't get to uh, VPN sites like NordVPN, or um, what's when I ended up using Proton VPN. It may be because this resolve file is loaded with DNS entries that are um, keeping you from being able to get to those. So I thought that was rather interesting. But back to the navigation and the videos that you were mentioning, you may not remember it, but you and I and Juan found a waypoint planner that Juan had on his machine and we fiddled around with it and got it working and it graphed um, uh, some waypoints that you that it would execute. Do you remind me how do I search? Where's the index for the videos? Because I wanted to go back and re re um, re look at that. Which videos? Our videos yeah. or Ross Agriculture videos? It was just you and I and Juan talking, so it would have been. Um, you know, post Ross Agriculture. Okay, you you can find it various ways. You can go out to our pinned link in general. It'll it'll tell you there of the index, or any of the YouTube videos has it down at the bottom. And when I post once a week, saying here's what we did this this time, the link is on there. So there's lots of different places you can find that index, a pointer to that index file. So if you just go to Slack right now and look at last week's meeting, down at the bottom there's a bunch of links. One says here's the Here's the index for lawn tractor group. Down, go down past all this. Keep going, keep going. So right there in that block of stuff, it says, it says index for lawn tractor automation group. So you click on that. And I see it takes you right to the file. That that's in a directory. If you back up one directory, it's got it's got the index for lawn for for lawn tractor stuff, and then it's got like three or four. Uh, just incrementing files for Ross Agriculture. And then it's got the README file. The README file is really only for the Ross Agriculture stuff. So it's just a place to store the lawn tractor meeting. Uh, well, I call it lawn tractor meeting notes. It's really the index. So if you look in that as a text file, you can download that text file to your computer if you want. And there's there was that back in Ross Agriculture, there's something funny about all the, if I'd cut the chat out of Let's see, I was cutting the chat from YouTube and pasting it in, and it would, it would trim the links off and put some stupid characters at the end. I don't think I have that problem anymore because that's not the way I'm doing it. I'm generating, taking chat directly from Zoom and putting it in here, so that, that should work. So just at the top of the file, if you know what you're looking for, just, just do a search on this file. But now I forgot what you were talking about. Um, waypoint. Waypoint. Okay, it's just, yeah, just search for waypoint and see what comes up. There's only one, huh? Yeah. Well, that's hard to believe because back in Ross Agriculture, it's going to show up about 500 times. <laughs> hmm. Or you can search for navigation or you can search for, uh, I, I can't think what are other. And this just happens to be, if, if I happen to put down the appropriate thing you're looking for, then you might be able to find it. Otherwise, I was thinking one time I should just have a thing that says keywords. Anything I can think of that was there, just put a whole list of keywords on it. But, I, you know, I've I've got way too many things to do, so I, I'm not going to go back through the whole thing right now and do that. <laughs> okay. And then well, the, you've the answered. Other, the other thing you can do is see the names all have a name with a colon. So if it was something on, on Juan's lawn tractor, put in one colon and search for that, and it'll show you every every time you know he he posted something or every time he said something or yeah. So that's... that that's another way to find stuff there. Okay, so that's what. Um... That's what I got today because the I had found some files. Um, let's see if I can find it here quickly. 
Uh, I'm back to my Google Drive here. Anyway. And also, if you go out to the uh, the original Ross Agriculture stuff, even though it, it, if later today you check, I've got an extra what extra thirty four videos indexed, and and even there, you know, back back then we were talking about stuff. Cause I remember uh, Matt talking about going to Argentina to work on on Juan's lawn tractors. So there's you know chances there's discussions in there about what they are doing and how the stuff works too. So. Yeah, this was um <laughs> you'll be happy that they were talking about using Docker. Um Yeah, there was some specific this generated a specific visual file, a visual of the path, not in our viz, a separate and um, it's 2020. Will that open up in this one, put that out. No, no, that's not it. Anyway, uh, I, I was, you know, obviously given where I was at, I was going to try to use this with the simulator and see if I could publish or create um, a waypoint path using that process. And I thought going back to look at the videos would be useful. Yeah, like Dubin's. Yeah, that was like, remember generating a script that would run a Dubin's path? There's the image of that darn thing. Remember that image? That stuff we were doing? Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's a video on that. Look at that. I even mentioned at 1231 in this video. See if that video... Uh... <laughs> Probably one of them that I just moved. 21 March 5th. That one, if you got to the, the actual YouTube page, that that exact picture is on the, on the video for it. Look at that. It's that video. Did it, what, what did it say March 5th? I think it. Hold on. I'm just torturing you here. Bear with me. How do I get that off? I wanted to go to where? 1231 in the video. You going to hang in there with me? Let's see. It's okay. That's the way. That's the radius we have to find in the... There we go. That's what I was looking for. There's a line that says radius equals two. So what that done is awesome. I mean, see, that's what you're looking for. You mean you're look looking for that just to reference that thing you saw, or that's what you're actually trying to do in real life at this point? Well, I was gonna try to pick a couple, I mean, in my simulated um, version, I was gonna try to create this path and see if it would run that path in my simulated uh, yard. Okay. So anyway, that helped me um, sort of remind me of where things were and how they were working. So your simulated lawn tractor is doing exactly what it should be doing now? 
No, heavens no. Last time we you, spoke... You, you just thought you'd move on to something else? Last time we spoke, we I still haven't resolved the speed. So once I get the speed resolved, then I'll try to get it one of these simple paths. Oh, I remember now. You, you kept changing the numbers, but it didn't seem to want to go any faster. Right. Think, thinking back, I think when I was going back through the videos watching, when you first started that, you said, oh, here it is driving. And it was driving at like nine tenths of a meter per second. And as you went on throughout the meeting, it, it got slower and slower. And I, I don't know why, but when you first started, it was going almost one meter per second. Yes, that's still a problem that needs to be solved. And um, I was hoping once I got that solved, then I would try to give it a a path similar to um, uh one of these simple um, paths to follow. So that would be my um, get the speed resolved and then try to give it this simple. Is this called a Dubin's path? Uh, I think we're using Dubin's path there, yeah. Yeah, whatever that little <clears throat> circular thing is called. In fact, I think the whole thing was generated with Dubin's, even the, the, the long straight lines. He just simply said, I'm here, I want to go there. And it said, oh, I can do that with a straight line for you. So I think the straight lines and the curves at the end are all created with Dubin's path. <clears throat> cool. That's where we're at. I can't really think of anything else at the moment that I have been doing or thinking about. So I think we can pause the video.